cool. Thanks so much. Hi, hi Simon. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I loved the movie. <laughs> it, oh, thank um, you. Yeah, I, uh, I've i not seen anything like it for some time. And that's always a good thing <laughs> when doing what I do. I'm surprised that you've seen anything like it at any time. So <laughs> yes, good point. <laughs> um, in the first scene, when we're introduced to you, you're arm in arm with Marion Cotillard and Adam Driver. It looked cool. You look cool. In that moment, do you remember thinking, this is pretty cool? <laughs> <laughs> You try not to uh, leave the scene uh, and go, oh my God, that's Adam Driver, but sometimes you do. Um, yeah, well, the funny part about that particular scene is that it was the last thing that we shot and the only thing we shot in LA. So um, so by that point, I was a little uh, more jaded, um, uh, but always, uh, no, al always kind of stunned that I was in that company. And it was just such fun, particularly that scene, because we had, we had done the movie, you know, and it was the hard part in many ways was over. And that song is so exciting and so fun. And we were in Los Angeles and, uh, I don't know if we had permits, but we were just, you know, rocking and rolling and, um, walking down Santa Monica Boulevard. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. There were like, buses going by and, I, I was just kept thinking like, what do they, what do they think is happening? It's like me and Adam and Marion, and then there's kids and, a, and these, you know, choir girls. And then, yeah, so pretty cool. Mm. You sort of said just before about how, you know, it's not, not seen, it's a big surprise if I'd seen anything quite like this before. And that is the case. But having said that, I had seen Holy Motors, his, obviously Leos Carax's right. last movie, which again, I mean, it's nothing like in there, but again, it's a film unlike anything else I've ever seen. Had you seen that already or did you watch it? Um, as after getting the script in in for Annette and to, as kind of like research and if so what did you what did you make of that movie yeah well I I, I was absolutely obsessed with Leos's work um, some of it came kind of yeah around getting the script um, I got more familiar I should say you know with with Sparks and Leos after getting the script um, and I didn't see Holy Motors until I kind of went I tried to kind of go in some chronological order though I didn't totally do it but I did I think Mauvais Song was the first thing I saw which I was just floored by um and then Lovers on the Bridge and so once I got to Holy Motors and then Boy Meets Girl I think I I, I basically Holy Motors was the last thing I saw and it kind of his trajectory is amazing because he, he he it got more and more esoteric and absurd and and hilarious and um yeah so I I knew that this movie to me kind of lived somewhere between all of those you know there's there's definitely a kind of dreamscape fantasia element to this one, but to Annette, but at the same time, it's very straightforward. It's very tragic and satirical and uh, romantic. And it's not as like puzzling to me uh, as something like Holy Motors, which I think is brilliant, but you know, sometimes you don't know where, Holy Motors has more of that like David Lynch quality at, at times where you're like, whoa, like, where are we? Um, but uh, Annette to me is like, is a, it's an opera, you know? It's like, this is how I'm feeling. I don't want to die. I love you. I hate you, you know? Yeah. And then obviously in this, you, we can see you sort of playing the piano. Uh, and obviously I remember you sort of played the piano in Florence Foster Jenkins. And so I, I gather you, you actually are a pianist. It, it must be quite good to be getting roles that utilizes that talent alongside your acting. It's a bit of a niche, but you're, <laughs> you're finding it. Yeah, <laughs> I've cornered, I've cornered it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, a treat. I, you know, I love music um, and I love acting and when they come together and the line, uh, it's pretty, pretty beautiful. And sometimes it gives me a leg up. So I um, acted at school and when I mean like elementary school, like when I was really young and I, I could act in front of everyone. I, I was a real show off. I could be on stage and do anything. <laughs> Shakespeare to Scrooge whatever you name it but I was once asked to sing and I couldn't do it I was so nervous about singing I wondered how you found that and do you think it does tap into a different side of performance because there is a weird thing isn't there where you can be a really confident performer and yet singing can be a, a more nerve-wracking proposition um well for me I I, I had a, I had a similar um experience I guess but mainly because I just never trained as a singer. I don't know, like if you, did you, did you ever study singing? Oh no, I'm, I'm, or... I'm rubbish at singing, which is probably. Uh, well, I, I, think, <laughs> I think we've, I think we've solved your problem. I'm, I'm not a doctor, but uh, no, I mean, if, you know, if you, yeah, if you're, if you're uh, prepared for something or, or trained at doing something, I think it would bring probably a lot more comfort. Um, and yeah, I, I, I never studied singing, but you know, I can, with enough practice and work, I can, 
I can deliver, I guess, in certain uh, situations. So I, but it was, it wasn't something that I was incredibly comfortable with. So yeah, that brought, you know, I, I, that in conducting, you know, I had to really, really hunker down and, and drill um, because also, you know, when you go onto a set, it, it's like, you might be able to sing at home in your bathroom or conduct, you know, um, in your room, uh, listening to the, these songs and all that. But when you're, you know, when Adam Driver is holding your head underwater, it's harder to remember your, the, the breathing technique or your soft palate work that you did. So you really have to, you have to ingrain it as much as you can. Um, but yeah, that, that stuff is, that was scary. Any, anything that's kind of new and unfamiliar is uh, particularly, <laughs> can, can be a little nerve wracking. I, I mean, one of my favorite scenes was was that when you're the song when you're conducting and the kind of cameras sort of spanning around you, and I'm just wondering about the the nuances to that conducting scene in the sense that oh, you know it's very easy to just go like that, but you was, was <laughs> there but was but what I mean is it, what you did, but I, I guess is there real nuances and kind of like sort of more subtle things that actual conductors do because I could sit there and do that, but you there, there's much more to it, isn't there? Is basically what, <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> Ab absolutely, I mean. Uh... The one I never mastered was the Bugs Bunny, where he takes off the the glove and the uh, his hand stays there as he leaves the the stage. Um, but that's I think a cartoon. Um, yeah, it, no, it it it's like yeah, you, there's a well, it's a there's a craft. So uh, you you know I you obviously can't learn a life's work of craft, um, you know, in a, in the span of a few months. But I can learn enough, uh, and I I studied with conductors and. Um, studied videos and read about the technique of conducting and tried to kind of do some of the inside out work of what it is that, how, how to do it. And, and maybe even some of the psychology of what conductors, uh, some, some similarities I, I noticed kind of across the board um, with that type of personality. And then, but the technique of it, yeah, it's its own, um, it's its own ability. And I just wanted it to be authentic. And so I actually was conducting uh, those those orchestras in the, in the in those two scenes and um yeah because i you know i i've watched the jerry lewis conducting and i don't know oh, you know this is this we could have a good time here but uh no you want it to be you want it to be grounded and um and real is that one of the kind of joys and perks to your job like you were saying about kind of leaving your comfort zone to to sing but then doing you're kind of constantly picking up new skills i i interviewed an actor recently who said that he had to do a course on how to ride a horse while wielding a big sword and you don't get right. to do that in real life really but in your career and in your profession you're kind of constantly learning these all new skills that you probably otherwise never would have of sort of explored in any way yeah i it i i i love when that comes up because uh, well, it's just a great excuse to to keep learning. Um, and it's really fun to, it's just, it's fun to get to know your character and you can, <laughs> in the way that it's fun to get to know a, another person. But but when you're doing it as an actor, you know, you're you're really kind of getting inside of, of somebody and, uh, and I, it teaches you about yourself because it's all coming from you anyhow. So yeah, I feel like, in learning a skill, there's something tangible to it too um, that you can actually accomplish. Um, and it's fun. It's fun to, you know, of course, and then you're conducting or you're playing the piano or whatever it is you're doing, but, and then you have to figure out, oh my God, but wait, how would this character play the piano? Because it might be different, you know, learning a piece, I might sit there and, and play like this, but if he's classically trained, he's, there's going to be a different way he holds himself. And and then who is this guy and how would he approach it? And so it becomes a real, it becomes a real exploratory uh, process, which I think is, is very creative and very fulfilling. And, and um, yeah, it's thrilling, I guess is why I love, that's why I love acting. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned before how you kind of sort of grew to, to know more about Sparks as this kind of project when you sort of signed up to this project and stuff. They, they seem to have, I mean, they've been around obviously for, for decades, but off the back of, sort of Edgar Wright's documentary about them, there, there seems to be this kind of re resurgence of kind of Sparks and lots of new Sparks fans out there as this film seems to have come at a really good time. But have you become a sort of a big fan over the course of the kind of last couple of years? And are you quite surprised that they've kind of, you maybe weren't just a big fan already because they are kind of a bit of a, a hidden sort of, I don't know, a music industry secret to some degree. Yeah, I, I, I was peripherally familiar with them before the film. And, um, and then as I dug in, the first album I heard was Kimono My House. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. These are like 
there's like they're kind of this prog uh like prog pop rock band and then i would hear like number one in heaven and i was oh they're electronica and then i would hear you know indiscreet and i was like oh there's like this baroque pop element to them all every time i heard an album i thought wait i they're never the same they're always they and they're all kind of incredible uh in their own way and i heard they had already they had done an opera uh the ingmar bergman opera and i i was like listening to all these different albums i just couldn't believe it and and it's and in some ways it's kind of like laos too where it's always very clear that it's them but it never seems redundant or, or, or reminiscent of something that they've already done. I, I just, obviously, I'm talking of, obviously you collaborate with them on this, but talking of another collaborator, I mean, you do have a lot of scenes with Adam Driver. He is just sort of becoming one of the kind of most watchable kind of screen presences. He's just got this something about him and everything he's in at the moment. He's just incredible. And that one man show we see within the movie is is is, oh. is great. I mean, what's he like as a, as a physical actor to work alongside? Because you guys have very physical scenes in the film. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think that his performance, particularly in um, some of those monologues, uh, those scenes in particular, uh, I really, truly think this is one of the greatest performances I've ever seen on film. Um, it is, it, it's kind of impossible what he did. Uh, and I just, I, I'm astounded every time I see it. I, I just, I, I don't, I, I don't know if anybody else could have done that. Um, and uh Getting to work with him was as exciting as, uh, as as I had hoped, and as thrilling, and as kind of um, dangerous and uh, unknown. And um, there's an explosive quality, I, I think, to him because there's such a tremendous amount of focus that goes on um, before and 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 all throughout. So there's he really creates a space around him, which I I love personally. I don't really love to like you know do a bunch of pranks on the set uh i'm 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 all about working um when i'm there and and he is too and so what happens is when you conserve all that energy and you're you're focused it all comes out you know in the scenes and um doing that scene with him at the end you know yeah it was it was different every time and sometimes he'd throw in a towel over my head and sometimes i'm throwing it back or sometimes i'm getting up into his face as close as I can or sometimes we're you know there's a playfulness and there's a dance quality to it and it's um it's happening there and I think that's kind of the the little secret sauce is that uh it's got to be happening and it's got to be in front of you when the camera's on um and you got to be surprised uh and when you work with Adam that's it's all about that um and you know great actors elevate everyone around them so yeah. Well, my very quickly before I do go, because I'm running out, basically run out of time. I just wanted to know because I, I would make, unless I missed this sort of moment when they mentioned it, does your character have a name that on in in the script? And if not, did you give him one? <laughs> He's credited as the accompanist, which I always thought was kind of cruel because he he all he wants to do is be a conductor, and I didn't even get that uh, didn't even get that title. Uh, no, there's no there's no name, and I didn't give him a name. Um, so I'm I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> well, I think maybe just the accompanist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll do. Cool, brilliant. Well, anyway, thank you so much for your time today, uh, Simon. The best of luck with the release of the movie, and maybe we'll catch up again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah. Nice. Hey.